Okay, the last one. Um, I'm going to talk about MariaDB performance analysis with Linux, with Linux BPF. And I'm going to tell how I recently pinpointed a scalability issue in MariaDB with a BPF script. Um, about me, I'm Max Kellermann. I'm a Linux hacker and long-term open source maintainer. Uh, I've been working for more than 20 years at cm 4 which is now part of Yonos. And I'm building a shared, shared web hosting infrastructure in C++. Um, most of my work I'm doing for cm 4 is also open source on GitHub. You can visit it. I have quite a bit of My MySQL-related projects over there. Um, Shared web hosting is mostly about uh, providing a runtime for PHP. And um, uh, naturally, PHP wants to talk to uh, MySQL or MariaDB. And therefore, we have um, quite a few MariaDB clusters. And uh, of course, they're heavily, lo heavily loaded because there are at any time thousands of clients per, um, per server. A question totally uh, irrelevant to your presentation. If you have him alone on MariaDB servers, it would be really nice if you can give us some uh, data about uh, running the older versions and 11.4, because we haven't got that data from anybody running in production. We are running 10, 11 something. Uh, I, I don't know. I have it in a later slide. Yeah. Um, I don't have exact... Um... But when you start deploying 11.4, please keep us in the loop. We want to know so if there's something yes. that we need to improve. Um, I actually, I'm developing the web server. I'm not at all a database guy. Okay. Uh, I'm not even a MySQL user. Yeah, my colleague uh, is uh, responsible for okay. for MySQL. Okay. Uh, but not the cluster I'm talking about today. Uh, it's one we are uh, we have been deploying at CM for all. But our ops team is responsible for it, not me. Um, the last time I actually used MySQL was not at all. It was in the nineties. It was still MySQL. Um, so I'm really just a low-level guy, not using any databases. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, I just didn't know how to ask. No, yeah. Okay. Um, recently, uh, in one of the clusters, shared hosting, uh, shared web hosting clusters, I'm responsible for. Uh, we had uh, latency spikes with WordPress uh, um, processing, and usually our latency for uh, uh, invoking one WordPress page and rendering its HTML is 50 milliseconds. And uh, there are, could there were very visible spikes for up to several seconds, and I looked at our metrics and found uh, the same spikes at the same time at the MariaDB um, uh, clusters. Um, usually, um, uh, the average query uh, finishes in uh, 500 microseconds, and uh, in these um, spikes, we have several hundred milliseconds. So I did an investigation of why this is. Um, with the problem with shared web hosting is that you uh, have a lot of somebody else's bad code. I was talking about writes to the database. You see affected rows, a few spikes, but not exactly at the same time as uh, the WordPress uh, and uh, query weight spikes. And um, I enabled the slow carry log le like everybody would do. And um, here's one auto table, which takes 23 seconds. But what was so, uh, that's awfully slow. I wondered what the hell of a big table that is. But um, there are also show full columns, uh, which takes six seconds, four seconds, five seconds. And uh, it's uh, all, uh, always happens at the same time. Um, and I couldn't explain why it's slow. So I had a look at this uh, 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 alter table, uh, but found it was empty. There was an alter table on an empty table, which took 23 seconds. I had no idea why. But the strange it says that Rose examined this for with alter table. And sorry, it's, 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 I just about it, yes. Rose examined zero, yeah? Uh, empty alter table, even if the table is yeah, but okay, I didn't know that. As I said I'm not a, a MariaDB user, but I looked at the table, I did select on it, and it was indeed empty. Okay. Um, I did a few statistics on slow queries. Uh, most queries were harmless, show full columns. I don't know why those plugins do show full columns, but they do it, and it's sometimes slow. Most of the time, it's not. Um, 
and there's always a few alter table or drop index in between. Um, I tried hard to reproduce anything, but couldn't. I looked at other metrics. Um, the top graph shows um, I/O activity on the uh, buffer pool and shows a lot of page in when the queries were slow. Um, there was another correlation: the made young spiked through the roof. Um, but I try to. Uh, I, I I don't know what made young is, but um, I can spoil it now. It, it's it correlates, but it's uh, knowing this has uh, doesn't help with analyzing the problem. Um, I tried to analyze uh, reading from the database, but um, our My MariaDB servers ha have ten thousand threads and uh, just as many clients. Uh, my usual tool for analyzing I/O is S trace, but you can't S trace a daemon that has ten thousand threads. It will the performance will uh, go to the bottom immediately. Um, so I looked for other tools, found a tool called X4 Slower from the BCC project. Uh, it dumps continually dumps uh, uh, in real time, um, which uh, accesses to X4 file systems. In this uh, case, the data partition from MariaDB was slow. Uh, it found some very slow I/O, but not frequent enough and not slow enough. It maybe it has something to do with it, but it well, there was no clear indication that this is really the problem. Um, I found that x lore is an interesting tool, but it doesn't really help with my uh, uh, problem at hand, uh, and I need, I need better tools. Uh, I had a look at what uh, x lore is and how it obtains its information. It's actually a BPF script. Um, BPF is like a scripting engine inside the kernel. You can um, trace, or you can attach it at any code locations and run some uh, script. It can uh, read all parameters, it can read all memory, and you can collect statistics, transfer them to user space. Uh, this is an example of what I did with BPF Trace, which is a scripting language, a very simple scripting language for BPF. It's a one-liner. It attaches to the open ad system call and uh, prints the process name, thread ID, and the file name that's being opened. And uh, it's global on the whole um, uh, server, and the result is not surprising. MariaDB opens a lot of files, a lot of uh, database files. It creates a few temp files. Um, um, anyway, that shows that's a, that BPF is an interesting tool, a powerful tool, um, and I can do more with it. It can uh, not only attach to uh, system calls, but also to arbitrary user space uh, functions. In this case, I attach to the MariaDB ex executable and the other query function and told it to print the thread ID and the argument. It's the query. So now I have, with one line of uh, BPF script, uh, a dumper which dumps in real time all the queries that are being executed by MariaDB. It's nice. So I, I continued from there. Uh, I switched the tools. BPF trace is, uh, was too simple for me. Uh, I need something that can do more and more powerful. Uh, BCC is a framework for doing the same in C. It's, uh, it has a compiler based, based on CLang, which uh, compiles uh, C code to BPF bytecode. Um, like before, I um, attached a uprobe to a query to um, obtain the SKL statement and remember it for this uh, thread. Uh, I attach to do command, with, which is MariaDB's uh, central function for executing SQL statements. Um, one probe on entering do command to remember the timestamp, one um, a return probe on do command to um, uh, get the new timestamp and calculate the difference. So now I knew how long would queries take. Um, sorry for not copying the code here, it's too long. Um, you can find it on uh, GitHub. Uh, I can give you the link later. Um, this looks exactly like uh, MariaDB slow carry lock, but I can do it without cooperating with MariaDB, without changing anything on MariaDB, just by executing one simple script on the server. But the commit time for the last one is really uh, long. It's really slow. Yeah. Yes, true. We will see slower queries than that later. <coughs> um, remember, we had the read spike on the buffer pool on MySQL. Uh, so I tried um, more. First, I uh, attached to the raw syscalls uh, trace point in the kernel 
to trace all the system calls. So I could uh, uh, remember, uh, calculate the time between this enter and this exit. So I can get a, a total duration of all system calls within uh, for one query and uh, more trace points on, on uh, the read and other read-related system calls, like read vector, read v2, p read, and so on. Um, what I found was, um, indeed, uh, all the queries that were slow uh, spent a lot of time in the kernel this time. Uh, the whole duration of this commit was 194 milliseconds, and 193 of that was spent in the kernel. But none of that was spent in read. And not even the selects were reading anything. Uh, they did read, but just a little bit, and it took less than a millisecond, so it was below the rounding uh, of. But you can commit the writes and not reads. That's true. That's my next step. Uh, I thought, let's look at write, uh, because um, writing is always more complicated than reading. And if one process writes a lot of things, it could uh, really. Um, reduce the whole system's um, uh, speed. And uh, I chose the second one, Futex. Futex is the Linux kernel's low-level primitive for implementing user space locks. Um, surprise, uh, writing is free. Zero milliseconds for all writes. There are very few writes, 496 bytes for one update, um, nothing more, um, but 191 seconds, uh, milliseconds for, uh, the whole, for, for the whole update. Of that, 190 milliseconds in the kernel. And all of those 190 milliseconds were spent waiting for a footex, for a user space log. And that's the pattern you see in all those queries. So what, our problem was related to footexes. There was some log inside MariaDB in the process. Um, but it's, is, but it's in Futex in the kernel and not in MariaDB. Uh, yes, it's it's in MariaDB. Uh, if you if you call it pthread mutex lock, internally it will look if this uh, with an atomic um, memory access is this mutex locked or not. If it's already locked, it will call into the kernel and say, "Hey, wake me up when somebody unlocks this uh, mutex." Okay. And it's the same for um, uh, if you use pthreads, you have pthread mutex, uh, pthread cont, and so yeah. on. Uh, and reader writer logs, but MariaDB actually doesn't use those p threads only in a few code locations. Um, I found uh, that MariaDB has manual uh, invocations of the Futex system call and impl implements its own reader, reader writer logs. But only in, in the DB, I assume, because we don't, I know, upper level, we use the normal p protocols. Yes, but uh, the one I'm talking about does not use p threads. It implements its own locking primitives with p Futex. Is, is that, I assume that's in the DB? Yeah, it should be. Yes. Yeah. I'll come to that in uh, five minutes. Um, these are the real queries, uh, really slow queries, 1.4 seconds. And uh, you see a clear pattern here. All the calls take about the same time. All of them spend the whole time in waiting for a footex. Just this drop index doesn't wait for any footex at all. Mm -hmm. From this, I deduce that the drop is actually holding holding for the footex, uh, the user space lock for 1.4 seconds, and all the others are waiting for this one. No, that's the it's just sludge. The dictionary batch. Hey, don't spoil them. <laughs> 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 that's all and <laughs> observe the first column. I uh, added a column for the database name. These are the customer database names or uh, internal names. Um, all of those queries are on a different database. So it's not, not a table log, not a database log. It's a global log and the MariaDB daemon. Um, and now I have to find out, find out which one. Um, of course, I added another feature to the BPF, uh, to my BPF script, uh, to uh, determine which is the full text that has been waited on for the longest time. And that's the real power of BPF because it's easy to implement such, such a thing in, in a BPF script without adding much overhead to the overall operation. I can do this on this production server and nobody takes a notice of this. Um, yeah, and this pattern, uh, I guess you already knew this is uh, with this address, uh, but I didn't. Um, I had to find out. Uh, I did a simple trace of the footex system call with a call graph, that means stack trace, 
This is a stack, tra stack trace. Um, this is a syscall uh, function of the libc. Um, this is an internal uh, MariaDB function which implements this reader writer lock, which does not use pthreads. And this is the actual caller. Um, uh, but I have to uh, add to this. This might or might not be the look, the code uh, that is responsible for this problem. This is just one random location which locks this mutex. Uh, uh, this mutex. Um, I, I just wanted to have run uh, an arbitrary uh, uh, stack trace to see in the source code to find the source code location so I could know which one this is. And that this indeed is a Dix's ledge. Um, which are found to be blocking the whole MariaDB instance, uh, the whole server, and uh, locking all the uh, all the databases, all the customers. Um, yeah, I had some googling around. Uh, as I said, I had no idea of MariaDB. I've never used it. Uh, I googled a bit and found this. Uh, uh, ticket on the MariaDB Jira. I guess some of you will, may or may not know this. InnoDB is holding a shared dict sledge while we're waiting for foreign key child table lock on DDL. Uh, yeah, that's mostly gibberish for me, uh, as I don't know anything about this, but um, it's fixed in 10.11.8, and we're using Debian Bookworm, Bookworm which has 10.11.6. Thanks for Debian's uh, stability, bug for bug. Uh, this is. Uh, I, I don't know yet if this fix will fix our performance problem. Um, our ops are in the progress of updating all of our, our MariaDB servers. Um, after we finish that, we will know more. Um, but um, in general, um, there exists in MariaDB a global lock that's, that's being held for a long time. Um, that's for me a bit worrying because uh, such a global lock should really be optimized further. Um, maybe it has already been, um, but uh, global locks should um, are the first place where you should uh, apply optimizations. Really, uh, if you take a global lock, you should really, really re release this very quickly. And it has not been the case with this old MariaDB version. Uh, yeah, we're done already. Uh, BPF is a superpower. Um, and uh, I found this to be true. I read it. This is a, a, a site I found some on the net. It is a superpower. It allowed me to easily pinpoint uh, a big scalability issue in this old MariaDB version. And it's uh, an underutilized tool. Re everybody who uh, does performance analysis should know it. And um, this this talk was really only scratching the surface because I couldn't show you any of the real code. Uh, we didn't have enough time today. Um, we could make a one week or two week workshop on uh, doing BPF analysis, but um, not today. Um, about the overhead, um, there are people who are continuously tracing the whole systems to for better metrics with BPF. Um, you can do that, but you need to be aware that MyScript adds 400 microseconds of overhead to 500 mi uh, microseconds of auto, uh, average query time. It is considerable overhead. If you can afford it, it's okay. Um, but uh, I would only do it on servers where I really want to analyze um, the performance. Uh, yeah, my BPF script is public, as I said. I uh, pushed it as a pull request to the BCC project. Have a look at it. Maybe it gets merged, maybe not. But in any case, you can use it as an example code if you have. Uh, any uh, performance analysis to do on MariaDB. And yeah, thanks for listening. That's all for today. It is really impressive. Yeah. So I think what's really nice is that you can do this in a production server. Yes. And uh, with these, uh, you can yes, I, problems. So, so I guess you would think it would be relatively easy to make a probe that crash the server. No. No, really? No. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I, I saw that there are user space probes on in MariaDB. If you enable dtrace as a feature, then you have trace points inside, well-defined trace points inside MariaDB. Uh, the Debian build doesn't enable that feature, so I didn't have them. So I had, had to use generic U probes, which is a little bit more difficult because I have to um, uh, look up the uh, structure, structures in the MariaDB source code. Um, 
uh, but it's possible. Uh, I can go to any production server, and that's a real superpower. I don't have to uh, enable any debugging builds, any debugging feature. I just go to any arbitrary uh, MariaDB server and add, just trace it, and it will never crash. Yeah. That's guaranteed. And if it's too slow, then you can remove it quickly. Yes, of course, I can so quickly stop it. Um, but it's it it does over add overhead, but it's acceptable for uh, an analysis, and it will never crash. That's a guarantee given to you by the Linux kernel. Um, of course, you need root access because it can read arbitrary memory, uh, but it will never crash and it will never freeze the kernel. There are guarantees in the kernel. It has a validator which guarantees that your script will finish. But it, what it, happens if you, you you try to print a string that points to invalid memory? Yes. It, it handles that? Yes. Okay. It handles that safely, just like uh, the Linux kernel has internally one um, uh, function that copies uh, memory from user space to kernel space. Uh, and so the same function is used for BPF. So it validates all memory mappings and guarantees that this function will succeed or will bail out with an error, but it will never cross the kernel. Okay. So it's really a safe language. Like it's 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 kind of a kind of a VM that gives you strong uh, um, stability guarantees and uh, uh, non-freeze guarantees. Okay. So therefore, you don't need to fear to use it on a production system. And this is the dream for application developer trying to track down uh, new equipment power user a random problem in a, in a in a server because they can get it. Yeah, look it up. I said it's worth it. Um, I managed to stay away from BPF for the last eight years or so, and uh, a few weeks ago I used it for the first time, and I couldn't imagine how I could ever live without it. It's one of those tools. Another one that is worth mentioning, it's part of the BPF process. Yes. And that one is a bit tricky because if it requires that the user space code is compiled uh, with the uh, main point for that percent. Yeah, if you if you run stack traces, um, I think you need frame pointers. I'm not sure um, if that's really true. Um, there's uh, another possibility you have to have debug symbols. Uh, then you have dwarf uh, stack traces. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure if the kernel is able to extract stack traces. Okay. It's on purpose that they want to keep their kernel stack traces with yeah. simple. So there's the, an open bug. Uh, I will put this uh, one, two, three, four. It's exactly about this that it's done to stack trace unwinding unless the thing was the same. So what I have to do in one case of performance uh, uh, analysis, I, I have to compile it with C and uh, the SDBC plus plus with this the thing was the present. Um, what I showed here is without all uh, standard Debian system without frame point. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure if they have frame point. Mm. Ah, okay, yeah. But in my my script doesn't use any stack traces at all. Um, but you ha did you have a stack trace there? Yeah, you yes, have one. That that was one uh, generated from uh, the perf tool. That's not BPF. Ah, I think. Um, and that generates a stack trace from within user space, and it has an option to pass dwarf uh, debug symbols. But uh, the one I showed you was without uh, um, dwarf, it was the frame pointer method. But many Linux dis distributions um, chose to enable frame pointers again. Frame pointers were disabled in the uh, uh, 32 bit times when uh, another uh, uh, wasting a register for frame pointers was really expensive, but it's not anymore with uh, a for, a 64 bit. It's People say it's acceptable, it's maybe 1 or 2% of performance, and uh, on the other hand, you get uh, uh, stack traces. Yeah, basically, I have 16 kernel registers on the thing, basically, for an extension coming up for another 16 registers. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, over here. Getting lower. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But, but this off CPU time, it, it's um, for things like uh, if some threads are blocked, waiting for a resource, uh, that will immediately, immediately show you. Maybe even this this one you would have gotten some uh, like uh, flame graphs for that. I'm not sure, but it might have been possible. But of course, this method that you used, it's uh, much better because you didn't have to modify the space. Mm. 
I think most uh, you you can if you need stack traces you should have frame pointers I think uh, if you don't need stack traces like my script which doesn't use stack traces I just hook into the functions which I actually use I looked it up in the MariaDB source code um, if you, if you know the code uh, if you grab a bit in the source code you don't need uh, any stack traces. In for those cases that there are some weights like you're waiting for some base to be read or for the base one to be released and uh, things like that, if you can easily see. Yeah, can be useful in some cases, yes. No more questions. I think we're done. And uh, this thing doesn't want to show anything anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> that's because uh, the, the, the yeah. screen is done. Ah, OK. The MariaDB Foundation is the global contact point for collaboration on MariaDB server. Our work is made possible thanks to the support of our sponsors.